Hello everyone. Hey, if you happen to be looking for a place where you can overnight camp, where you could go to sleep at night with the sounds of the diesel engines running, uh, cars coming in, parking next to you, doors opening, hitting the side of your van, have I got the spot for you. <music> That's right. Uh, we're talking this week about rest areas and truck stops. And though I make it sound awful, they're actually a great resource that you can still in the days of COVID and this massive onslaught of van life RVers uh, that is still available to you. And so I want to talk about two things again, uh, truck stops and rest areas. I'm first going to talk about the rest areas. Rest areas, of course, are located on interstate highways. Now, on some secondary roads, they do have pullover spots and places that you can camp and spend the night. But for this purpose, uh, I'm going to just talk about interstate highways and rest areas. They are regulated usually by each state with their own set of rules for the state. They're not the county or city regulated, they're state regulated. So when you go into a state and you feel like you need to stay at a rest area, if it's not posted the time that you can stay there, you just Google it. You know, Google is your friend. Just Google it. And that state rest areas overnight. And that usually will get you uh, how long you can stay there. Other places have it posted. Now, the general rule of thumb of how long you could stay at a rest area is usually between five and 24 hours. And even five hours isn't great, but keep in mind a lot of times, I'd say the majority of the time, unless, a really, unless it's a really uh, problem area, rest area, you can get away with eight to 10 or 12 hours and just about any of them that are marked or unmarked five, 10, five, eight, 10, 24, 12 hours. Um, so why would you stay at a place like that? Because again, when you pull in and park, people are coming and going all day and all night to use the bathrooms and things like that. And that's really one of the reasons is, um, first of all, it's safe. Most of the time, police patrol this and they drive through. Um, oftentimes, they have an attendant on, on staff uh, to keep an eye on things. And also, it's just a generally clean place. Generally, I've been in some pretty nightmare trucks or rest areas, but generally the bathrooms are clean. They have running water, flush toilets, uh, and you can just kind of refresh yourself. They also oftentimes will have vending machines. Now, the vending machines may not be working. Or just take your money, uh, or they'll have signs on them saying that they're not working. And boy, if you ever find one that has a coffee machine that actually works, let me know. Because for some reason, I'm dying for a cup of coffee. And and if they do have a coffee machine, nine times out of ten, it's out of order. However, again, rest areas are nice. Again, if you're driving just in a van or a car, you park where all those are. If you're driving an RV, you're, you can go back where the trucks are and uh, spend the night there. Um, uh, again, if you have a dog, please use it. They have a pet area usually for those. They have picnic tables too in, in a lot of these rest areas. Now, remember, some of these rest areas are just a place to pull over without even a bathroom, but it's a place that you can spend the night if you need to. Um, so number one, rest areas, a great resource. How do you find them? Well, if you have a phone, you can get an app and just type in rest area. And there are, I think, several apps that actually 
uh, ask you what road you're on or your GPS coordinates, and it will tell you the northbound, southbound, east or westbound options that you have and how far away they are from you. So be sure to pick up one of those apps. That's one of the apps I use on my phone all the time. The next one now, changing gears, would be uh, changing gears, RRR, would be truck stops. Now, truck stops have a bad rap. You know, they always say, oh, that's a place where a lot of drugs and illicit activity happens. You can get robbed. And yeah, again, you don't go walking around, you know, the worst parts of Chicago at two in the morning. And it's the same thing as you aren't going to go and park and leave your windows rolled down in the worst truck stop in the worst part of some city. So use common sense. My experience are the loves and the pilot truck stops or the flying J's. They're related. Um, are very clean and very safe. And their rules are generally pretty consistent. They're usually $12 for showers, which is a great option if you're spending there. And like for Marvie and I, there's two of us. So that's like six bucks each, which is a pretty darn cheap shower for two people. They're sterile. They're clean uh, inside. Uh, they're just a great resource if you have that little bit of extra money uh, to spend on a hot shower. Also, the Pilot Flying J, you can get a membership card. And it gives you discounts on if you buy coffee and stuff after a while, you get one free cup. And then, but I also find that it knocks the price of gas down three cents. And what you have to do there is you run your debit card first at the machine, and then you you put that card in, and then you see the price drop a bit. So that's really good. Now, not all truck stops are Loves or Flying J's. There are some, there's a Morton's, I think, in... Vegas. And uh, it's a travel center. Now they have showers here, but those are only for the truck drivers. So every place has their own rules. Okay. So, and generally truck stops, um, you park in the front, not where the trucks are in the back, unless you have a big RV, then most of the time they don't have an issue with that. But uh, in the front with where the parking spots are, now you have to go in and ask them because every truck stop has its own rules. And don't be worried if you see a sign that says one hour parking only all around. If you go in and ask, my experience is seven out of 10 times, they go, no, it's, don't worry about it. If you're here only for one night, it's cool. You know, uh, again, don't open your slides and set up your lawn chairs and things like that. Okay. So um, don't abuse it. So the rest of us can't stay there. So why are these two options um, helpful to you for spending the night? It's not like you're camping and you're going out and setting up your camp like what we have here. Um, we're in Craggy Wash right now, and uh, uh, we don't have to worry about that. But when we're traveling, these are great resources to use. Now, remember from the last video on Walmart, um, certain cities prohibit you. Not just Walmart says no, but the city says no camping on public or private land unless uh, the shelters or emergency shelters are closed. However, when you go into places like when we were in Las Vegas recently, uh, very hard to find a place. The uh, places we used to go to last year don't allow you to do that because people have abused them. But um, we stay, we would stay at Oh, oh, let me go back and go to, uh, let's say Boise, because Boise has that city ordinance that you can't camp anywhere. Well, for one night, we would stay at a truck stop close into town. The next night, we would drive about six miles out to a rest area. And then we would drive about another two miles, I think, to the next exit to turn around. And that had a rest, a truck stop there, stay there. And then on the way back, you could stay on the opposite side of the rest area that you stayed at the night before. And then you could go back into town, do stuff, and then go back to the original truck stop. And there you haven't been there for three or four days. And everything's pretty, pretty cool. So you can stay quite a while in a city to do what you need to do just by rotating your resources and they're just not seeing your same vehicle night after night after night and you can avoid any problems that might arise okay anyway 
That's it about rest areas and truck stops. If you have any experiences or comments, please share them below about those. And uh, again, thank you so much to our Patreon folks and the people who click on our links to go to Amazon to make their purchases. We get a small compensation for that. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you down the road.